Hello friends, the Reserve Bank of India has recently done significant changes in the KYC process. As you know that these processes are followed by various banks and financial institutions also known as regulated entities. Uh, the changes come into effect from 4th May 2023. These changes cover various areas of KYC policy such as customer identification by banks and financial institution, risk based approach and introduction of some new terms and concepts such as payable through account. Since changes are widespread, it is very important that a person working in the KYC and AML domain should be aware of these changes. To help such people, I have created 10 questions which cover the most recent changes made by RBI. So in this video, I will be taking you through those questions. There are in all 10 questions. Let me start by asking the first question which is on this slide as you can see as per RBI master direction on KYC in case of a company the beneficial owner is the natural person who whether acting alone or together or through one or more judicial persons has have a controlling ownership interest or who exercise control through other means okay now this is a uh, this is something which is applicable in case of a company which is not a natural person but rather an artificial person but it is run by natural persons which we all know so there is a concept of controlling interest in case of companies okay so controlling interest uh, or controlling ownership interest means ownership of or entitlement to uh, what percentage of share or capital or profits of the company so earlier it was 25 percent but with the changes introduced by rbi now it is no more 25 percent it is actually 10 percent so please note that this is a change which has happened which is the controlling ownership interest is now defined on the basis of uh, uh, 10 percent or more of shares capital or profits of the company the second question is which of the following is not included in the identification of beneficial owner in case of trust for KYC. So identification of beneficial owner for trust has also undergone change in the new KYC process. So author of the trust was always there. The trustee was there. The beneficiary is with 5% or more interest in the trust is not covered actually what is covered is that beneficiaries with 10 percent or more interest in the trust so this is a change which has been introduced by rbi we move on to question three which is about a concept and this is a very important concept which is used internationally but rbi has inserted this particular concept with the recent change in the kyc master direction so what is the question in some correspondent banking relationship, the respondent bank's customers are permitted to conduct their own transactions, okay, including sending wire transfers, making and withdrawing deposits, and maintaining checking accounts through the respondent bank's correspondent account without first clearing the transaction through the respondent bank. So there is no need to clear the transaction through respondent bank. You can use the services of correspondent bank directly, okay. What is the term associated with this concept which has been introduced by RBI in the latest master direction? So if you have this kind of an arrangement, the concept is called as payable through account. So this is a new concept which has been introduced by RBI in the master direction. Okay. We move on to the question number four. Which of the following is not included in the list of foreign PEP as per RBI's master direction? So RBI has specified the details of foreign PEP in the master direction and representative of united nations are not covered in that all other three are covered in the foreign pep concept we move on to question number five which of the following is true about correspondent banking so correspondent banking a relationship and its details have got coverage in the latest master direction so correspondent banking is uh, basically uh, you know provision of banking services by the correspondent bank to the respondent bank 
so this is something uh, which is what has been uh, you know included as part of a new concept and this is what gets covered also under the uh, concept we move on to question number 6 which is which of the what is the meaning of physical presence in context of a shell bank so the idea of shell bank has been introduced in the master master direction so does it mean a branch office with local agent or low level staff does it mean a bank which does which does online business only does it mean a bank with no registered office actually no it means meaningful mind and management located within a country so the answer would be b here we move on to question number 7 which of the following terms will be used in case a bank reveals risk categorization of a customer and specific reasons for such categorization to the customer so it is like you are doing uh, or you are revealing as a bank the reason why a customer has been say made high risk customers such such approach or such disclosure would be called as tipping off and tipping off is not allowed in the in context of the kyc and aml policy the question number 8 is which of the following means the unique number or code assigned to a customer by the central kyc records registry and this is called as kyc identifier so this is also something newly inserted in the master direction that rbi has introduced this takes us to question number 9 which of the following is the purpose for which non profit organization are constituted so uh, if you are an npo you are subject to a special screening for kyc and aml so is it religious is it charitable or is it neither the answer is it is both religious and charitable we move on to question number 10 which of the following has been included in the scope of risk based supervision by the rbi so customer shall be categorized as low medium and high risk which was anyway there risk categorization shall be undertaken based on parameters such as customer's identity financial status nature of business activity and information about customer business and their location uh, which was there already while considering customer's identity the ability to confirm identity documents through online or other services offered by issuing authority may also be factored in which was already there so what has been introduced is the broad principle which may be laid down by regulated entities for risk categorization of customers so the idea was to take you through these 10 questions to help you understand the recent changes i am sure you would have liked this video if that's the case then please subscribe to my channel and also press the like button thank you